Hey everyone, and welcome to the Hamilton Arts Awards. My name is Gavin Stevens, and I'll be the host and MC for this year's festivities. You might have seen me on CTV or the Comedy Network, possibly CBC, but I also host my own podcast called Uncolonized. Some of you might be thinking, Gavin, how come you're going into my ear holes and not in front of my eyeball places? That's because this year's award show is going to be a podcast. For those of you my age and a little bit older, a podcast is a radio play on the internet. Each episode, I'll be interviewing a winner, allowing you to get to know each and every one of these talented people. We had a lot of laughs, got to know the artists, and found out what each one of these talented people planned on doing with their award after the show. I had a great time hanging out with these people, and I hope you do as well. So without further ado, please enjoy the Hamilton Arts Awards podcast. Janet Rogers is a Mohawk Tuscarora writer from the Six Nations territory of the Grand River, where she operates the Ojitsto publishing label. Janet works in page poetry, spoken word performance poetry, video poetry, and recorded poetry with music. She is a radio broadcaster, documentary producer, and media and sound artist. Over the past 11 months, Janet has been the Mabel Pugh Taylor Artist in Residence, a joint effort with McMaster University and HPL. The Arts Awards are pleased to have commissioned a series of recordings from Janet that will appear in each episode of our podcast series. Where it ends again. No beginning. None we can recall. Gradual and stealth. Sneaky almost. No beginning or end. An enigma to be sure. Vapor transforming from orifices of mediums while in trance. Transformative and evolutionary. Can we all just try to keep up? When expectations come up short, become excuses for being lesser than expected. I just want everyone to be psychic, to be able to read each other's minds and feel how others feel. But maybe that will put the poets out of work. For there'd be no need for verse, affirming emotions so passionately unresolved. We all always have choices and where to begin and when to come in and how to comprehend that which we already sort of know. Burdens of truth is where it ends again. The City of Hamilton Arts Awards is pleased to partner with the Hamilton Community Foundation's Shirley M. Elford Artist Fund to present the Shirley Elford Emerging Artist Commission Prize. This prize is awarded in memory of the late Shirley Elford, a Hamilton artist celebrated for her excellence in glasswork and her work giving back to the local arts community and the community at large. Two artists will each be given a $2,000 commission fee to present a work at the 2022 Arts Awards event. It is expected that these artists' work will explore contemporary themes related to Hamilton's evolving identity. The Shirley Elford Emerging Artist Commission Prize recognizes artistic excellence and is intended to support emerging artists in furthering their work and providing opportunities to promote and showcase their work. Congratulations to Dylan Vandemail and Fare Malik on being selected for the 2021 Shirley Elford Emerging Artist Commission Prize. Dylan is a multidisciplinary artist based in Hamilton, Ontario. He found his passion for performing while taking Glendale Secondary School's Program for the Arts. Since then, he's gone on to work with companies such as Theatre Aquarius, the Frostbites Festival, Defining Movement Dance, and more. Dylan enjoys connecting with other artists and loves Hamilton for its tightly knit arts community. Fare Malik has erupted forth into the poetry field like fresh water does an estuary. Formerly a spoken word poet, He's been recognized by dozens of literary presses and has been included in several anthologies in little over six months. He's also the first place recipient of the MH Canada 2020 Poetry Contest. Well, this is episode 11, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. It's been real. It's been a fun time. I'm going to do some bits for you now. So I'm half black and half Portuguese. I say this because I tour this country and I tour all over the place and a lot of people have no idea who or what I am. Uh, I've had people say some weird things to me based off trying to guess what race I am. It's not a game, so you don't have to do that. But still, 
Like I had a dude once tell me that he didn't know I was black, but he was colorblind, right? He didn't, and he didn't have his glasses. And I was like, that's weird. You don't have to say that. Like, it's fine. I'm very white passing. It's fine if you mistake me for white. You don't, you don't have to make up a stigma. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, I had no idea you were black, but uh, you know how my Negro nearsightedness has been acting up these days. Just, mm. I've been w- watching you for 30 minutes now. I thought you were Sir John A. McDonald. You don't have to do that. It's fine. All that being said, I have a podcast called Uncolonize. Each week, my friend Daniel Grant and I talk about social issues, political issues, pop culture issues, and racism in Canada, and we make it funny. I know that's hard to understand, but if you listen to it, you'll get it. Uh, You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can get Uncolonized. Now a word from one of our amazing sponsors. Welcome and thank you. I'm delighted to support the Hamilton Arts Awards again this year, which is one of the oldest programs of its kind in Canada. My name is Marie Phillips, and I'm the owner of Next Steps Planning with IPC Securities, a wealth advice firm in the greater Hamilton area. We engage and empower clients through ongoing financial literacy to make positive financial decisions throughout all stages of their life that is aligned with their personal and professional goals, values, and wishes. Achieving wealth is not a purpose or a destination, but rather a tool to help enrich your life, your community, and your loved ones. And what better purpose is there possible than to support the arts? My sincere congratulations go out to the nominees of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. Hello. My name is Gary Barwin, and I'm a member of the jury for the 2021 Arts Awards. We appreciate the nomination of the 12 individuals and duos by the public in this category, and recognize the work of the Arts Sector Review Panel in developing an extremely strong shortlist. Both of the shortlisted nominees are commended for their impressive list of accomplishments and their impact on the community. I'm so pleased to announce that the winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award is Tom Wilson. Tom was selected as this year's recipient because of his exceptional accomplishments, both locally and nationally, and his excellence as a musician and storyteller. Tom is genuine and honest in his craft, and the jury acknowledges the powerful vulnerability he demonstrates in exploring his Indigenous heritage through his art. We feel that it's fitting to confer the Lifetime Achievement Award to someone who has deep roots in Hamilton and has demonstrated a lifetime commitment to advocating for local arts and music. Congratulations, Tom. Our Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Tom Wilson, is the best-selling author of Beautiful Scars, as well as a five-time Juno-winning Canadian musician with multiple gold records. Wilson toured extensively with his bands Junk House, Blackie, and the Rodeo Kings, and most recently, Lee Harvey Osman. Oh, my name's Tom Wilson, and I'm uh, working uh, to be an artist. You have a mentality towards, like, you're still learning. Yes, of course. I, I firmly believe that uh, anybody who claims that they're an artist is probably fooling themselves and and actually not doing themselves uh, any favors the idea of being you want to be an artist your entire you want to work at being an artist your entire life you know you don't want that train to ever pull into the station and uh, you don't want to claim yourself as an artist uh, you want the people who are standing beside your grave throwing dirt on you that uh, let them say you know what that guy was kind of like an artist wasn't he how would you describe yourself then what's the ter- what's the term that you would use? Oh, what, uh, what's that great, uh, you know, that great Bob Dylan line? They said, uh, you know, what are you? And, you know, he says, I consider myself a song and dance man, <laughs> which is like <laughs> possibly the greatest answer to, uh, to that. Uh, and I, don't, I say stupid question, not that you're stupid or your question is really stupid, Gavin. It's a fair question. I wouldn't consider anything to do with art what I am. I'm a survivor, and uh, and I survive through uh, creation. Um, I wake up every day wanting to create something that uh, wasn't there yesterday. That is uh, 
uh, what I wanted to do since I was four years old. And uh, really, if, if I was to walk out onto Queen Street and get hit by a car, I would, I would die being exactly what I planned to be when I was four years old. You've always been creating and every day is you're just creating something new. Try to, you know, um, after I finish writing in the morning here at this desk, I go to my studio um, at the cotton factory and I paint. And really, that's the only time when I'm able to shut out everything. And it's just me and shapes and colors. And uh, my mind gets to go to another place. So I'm guessing that's how you're taking care of yourself on COVID right now. Like that's. That's how I'm taking care of myself. It's why I, it's why I uh, gave myself the moniker a survivor because um, it's how I've taken care of myself pretty well my whole life, you know, uh, not only uh, uh, spiritually, but also um, monetarily. What have you learned about yourself that's new during this time? My uh, humanity, I think, may be magnified uh, in the last year a little more. But my wife is teaching kids and, and I mean, uh, she comes face to face with with young people who are uh, fighting depression or don't know how to fight depression. And uh, the effects of this are on all of us. And if any of us say that we haven't fought with our partners or with our kids or with, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're our, our teeth are a little more sharp as a result of us um, uh, having to fight this every day. Um, but I always say uh, first world problems, Gavin, you know what I mean? I live in Hamilton, Ontario. I live in, you know, to me, still the greatest city uh, that I could ever live in, you know, and uh, and I, I have the luxury of, of writing, as I said, every day. I have the, the luxury of going to my studio and painting every day, you know, but, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I've set myself up that way, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've worked really hard uh, to set myself up to do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. And that sounds like a real bratty thing to say, but it, it really is what working to be an artist is all about is, is being able to uh, manage that. You're, you're the lifetime achievement award winner. You're the one this year. What, what does that award mean to you? My formal reply is it is an extreme honor and uh, a pleasure to be acknowledged this way. The fact that uh, that it's my city doing it, that my city's giving me this award uh, means more than, you know, any Junos or Geminis or, or, or anything in some way, because I've written about this city my entire life. And uh, uh, as a result, um, nobody in Hamilton's really <laughs> said a thing about it right i'm gonna tell you that so this is a big deal this is hamilton saying high five tom thanks for writing all those songs and thanks for writing that book about hamilton man that was pretty cool um years ago not about 1994 we were um i was touring i was in a band called junk house and we were touring in europe and we we're in germany and we were being i was being interviewed by rolling stone magazine right over there the european version i guess um, and uh, the guy was saying, he says, well, tell me, uh, tell me about w the Skyway Bridge and, and tell me about Burlington Street and the steel mills and tell me about the TH&B. What is the TH&B and what is the Niagara Escarpment? And it was all these things that, you know, when you when you write about where you're from and you send it, you know, four or five thousand miles away, there's a romance that comes back. I'm sure that. You know, when we hear Van Morrison sing about Cypress Avenue, uh, you know, it's as beautiful, you know, uh, windy, you know, rain, rain swept street, you know, and, and it's like a painting. Right. And I'm sure in reality, it's not like that. It's the same thing in Hamilton. Uh, when you actually write about your the streets that you walk in and, and, and that that writing, that creation gets somewhere else over to Europe or the Germany in this case. You know, there's a there's a romance and, and an intrigue about it. So that was Rolling Stone magazine. Um, nobody in Hamilton said anything about any reference to any of those things on that record, except for the guy out in front of the Dundurn Street beer store um, one time when I came out and he said, hey, man, thanks for writing about Hamilton. That's really cool. And I said, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Just, <laughs> uh, where do you where do you plan on displaying your award in your home? Like, do you have a place? Well, um, downstairs, uh, the, 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 the awards uh, 
they kind of got moved around a little bit over the last couple of years. In fact, I didn't have any of them. I had them, the woman who raised me, Bunny Wilson, I, I, when I won gold records and things like that, like from the music industry, you know, or I, the Gemini, whatever it is, uh, I, I gave them to her. And when she passed away, um, uh, they were, uh, you know, brought back to me. Uh, but it was my daughter that said, you know, dad, you know, you should really put these out. You should be proud of this. And it wasn't that I wasn't proud of it. It's just that I was, uh, um, those things had already happened, you know, and, uh, I was interested in what was going to happen next. And this lifetime achievement award is coming up and, and, uh, and I'm thrilled, but when it's done, you know, um, you know, it's not going to, uh, not going to change me waking up the next day and coming up here and writing. That's, that's kind of the thing, you know? I don't know if you're Christian, but would you put that on a Christmas tree? If it's a metal, like just instead of the angel put at the top of a Christmas tree or. Hell no. If it's a metal, I'm wearing that shit 24 seven. There's no doubt about it. You'll be seeing me at Fortino's pushing a cart with that thing around my neck. No doubt. You're the second person with the Fortino's. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Fortino's is a very important part of uh, Hamilton culture, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's very Hamilton. I'll say that. If you could have dinner with any artist from any time period, who would it be? Well, I, I had dinner uh, two summers ago in New York with Ethan Cohen. Um, the, so that pretty well uh, that pretty well ended it, you know. And once he found out my wife was a drama teacher, that's all he wanted to talk about. One of the Cohen brothers. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that was that, that was pretty great. I, and, and that's because um, you know I'm in awe of the depth and the. Uh, amount of of work that they've done that is just like not knocks me on my ass every time man you know so um you know i mean i i've been i've had the i've had the ability or the situations come up where i've had to got to work with some of my favorite writers and singers the first reading i ever did uh my my book launch um i've started to read and i looked out in the audience and michael andache was sitting in the third row listening to me read you know i'm dyslexic i i can't even read very well it seems that i can write okay you know so he's sitting over there and i thought well shit man i don't want to be looking there so i decided to put, put my attention over here and i looked on this side and john irving was sitting three rows back over there like these people are are giants and and um you know we you can't ever say that you be, want to be able to write as good as Michael Andache. And you can't say, you know, boy, I sure would like to be as good as, uh, you know, Bob Dylan or, you know, I don't know, somebody like that. It's like, well, that's that's a ridiculous thing to say. You, you'd have to be that person, you know. And the the what you have to remember is that what you have to offer as a human being, what you have to offer, what your heart has to offer the world, is as important as any of those great artists and and being happy with who you are is is probably the the greatest tool to working at being an artist you know but well, who's a hamilton musician or band that everyone should uh, have an eye on right now you think well the greatest uh, the greatest uh, poet uh, musician and, and short story writer that i've ever known is a guy named tim gibbons mm -hmm. and he's uh, he's older than me um, he was, uh, he had a song, uh, he was, uh, Billy Bob Thornton was a big fan of his, Daniel Lanois was a big fan of his, he's somebody that has avoided, um, things like this, you know, he's never, uh, n never been interested or put his hat in the ring to be a lifetime achievement award winner or, uh, an award winner of any kind. He, uh, to me is a true artist and I can't beat Tim Gibbons, but if I was, uh, and I keep talking about going deep because that's what uh, this whole process is about, is how deep can you go? What can you pull out of there? You know, what you can you create when you create, you know, you know, you're stirring up all the sludge at the bottom of your lake and, and you're releasing all that blackness and you're freeing yourself and you're becoming healthier. And uh, Tim Gibbons is uh, is probably uh, is probably the Hamilton all around Hamilton artist that I think is uh, a, a genius level, <laughs> you know. Uh, who's an artist in Hamilton you love collaborating with? My ex roofer and uh, metal artist uh, Mark Flieger. 
who um, Mark Flieger was a guy that was uh, is a guy that, you know, he's probably on some kind of scaffolding somewhere in this my neighborhood right now. He does all the roofs and all the windows and cleans out the eaves troughs. Right. And he was putting a roof on my house uh, a couple summers ago. And he goes, hey, man, where are you going? I said, I'm going down to my studio. Um, I'm going down to paint. He goes, oh, he says, you're lucky, man. He says, you, you know, he says, you're lucky that you you've made your life that you actually, you know, work at your art every day. I said, yeah. I said, I, I, I realize that. I'm very fortunate, but I have worked really hard to, to cre create this space for myself. He said, yeah. He says, I only get to work at my art. He says, after I finish doing your roof, I go back home and I work on my art. And I said, well, what kind of art do you do? And he says, well, I work with metal. He said, I'm a welder. And I said, well, I'd love to see some of your work. Long story short, he brought me a piece to paint. And it's, a, I love the work that he does. I don't even know what, I don't even know what magic he creates in his shed out behind his house out in the country, but he brings this stuff to me and it's raw and it's powerful and uh, the shapes are excellent to paint on. So we've been collaborating, um, uh, working on art for about the last, oh geez, uh, not quite a year, but um, we're looking forward to do a lot more. That's great. So like you, you dabble in a whole bunch of stuff. Like uh, you write books, you do music, and then you're working with a metal guy. So, I mean, you're all over the place. I, I, I go where the energy takes me. And, and, and Gavin, to be fair, uh, I am a Hamilton guy. I'm about coffee and cigarettes. I'm not, you know, I'm not like a hippie or anything. But really where, where, the, where the spirit takes me is, is where I go. And, and that's... Phew, that's a pretty good place to be riding, you know. A lot of the winners are like you, where they do a lot of different things and they just they go where where, where the energy takes them. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna start wrapping up. This has been this has been very interesting and very fun. Uh, what what do you find is defining characteristic of Hamilton? Uh, the fact that uh, we often don't know how great we are because it keeps us working harder, you know? and it's not a sob story. You know, the underdog often has a sob story. Hamilton doesn't have a sob story. Hamilton just uh, doesn't really uh, look in the mirror long enough uh, to know how handsome it is. And as a result, uh, has to try a little bit harder. And I think that's what makes uh, really, truly great writers and thinkers come out of this city. Midnight snack. you i'm in purgatory a big newspaper without a story well, everyone, that was our 11th and final episode of the Arts Awards podcast. I hope you had a good time listening to my conversation I had with the Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Tom Wilson. And to wrap things up, a message from city manager Jeanette Smith. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeanette Smith, city manager for the city of Hamilton. I don't know about you, but I certainly did not expect us to find ourselves back online again this year for the Arts Awards event. But I am happy that we were able to safely celebrate our arts community despite the challenging circumstances around COVID. On behalf of the City of Hamilton, I would like to thank all of the nominators, jurors and sponsors who make the Arts Award program possible and to congratulate all of the nominees and award winners. A special thank you to Kim Selman and Jeremy Freiberger of Cobalt Connects, who skillfully led the nomination and adjudication processes and have played a key role in the planning and development of this presentation. I wanna recognize the Planning and Economic Development Department, specifically the team in Tourism and Culture who oversee and implement the Arts Awards annually. Thanks to Jen Anasif, Lauren Anastasi, Ken Coit, and Carrie Brooks Joyner. These are very challenging times for the arts community, but we look forward to coming together in person again to celebrate and heal collectively through the arts. My sincere thank you to the arts community for enriching our lives has been evident has been evident throughout this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay safe. The music in today's episode was by Paulo Leon Riez, Tara Lightfoot, Dylan Hudecki, and Aline Felice. 
Illustrations by David Culler, Michael Byers, and Robin Lightwalker. The City of Hamilton Arts Awards are presented during Arts Week, June 3rd to the 12th. To learn more about Arts Week or the Save the Arts campaign, visit hamiltonartscouncil.ca. Production by Cobalt Connects, Lilt Films, and me, Gavin Stevens.